in few minutes. Hey everyone, welcome to another Unity tutorial. This time we're going to talk about a black hole shader with Unity Shader Graph. And this one will be fairly simple and short, so don't worry about the length. We're going to use refraction, which is a new thing. And we're going to use smooth step function, which you're going to see in the tutorial in a moment. And with using, using the screen position and its UV coordinates, we're gonna play with it, we're gonna stretch it, we're gonna invert it, and then we're gonna apply it back and combine it with this black hole's core, and then we're gonna create this nice black hole effect. So without further ado, let's jump to the tutorial. First of all, please make sure that you have enabled Lightweight Render Pipeline and installed Shader Graph. In your Render Pipeline asset, please enable opaque texture this will allow us to do all that refraction magic then let's create a shader graph and create three vector one variable first one will be hole size which will control actual black hole circle diameter a second we need distortion strength in order to control our black holes environment distortion and third we need a smoothness value in order to apply a smooth fade out from core to outside edge. Let's start with dragging hole size. We're going to use a remap node to invert our scale because we're going to subtract and add this value with smoothness in order to make a balanced smooth out core value. So the meaning of all these operations is because if the smoothness is zero, Blending distance between black core and fuzzy color will be short, which will look like there's no smoothing at all. Or vice versa if you increase the smoothness value. Then we're gonna need some kind of control in order to make that fade effect because we have both sides, the fuzziness and the black hole core, black color. 
So for this, we're going to need a for now node. But there's one thing that we need to know, which is for now we'll keep white color as the same and will let us change the black parts. So we need a one minus node to invert it because we want that fuzziness at the edge of this core, not in the cores itself. All right, now to actually blend them together, we need a smooth step node, which will actually do that smooth fade out. So for the first one, add value gonna go to edge one and subtract value gonna go to edge two. And then for now, we'll go to input because input will actually determine what kind of behavior this smooth step will represent. Alrighty, core part is complete. Now we can switch to the actual distortion part. Okay, let's start with another for now node and connect distortion strength from values to the power input of the for now node. Let's set a default value as three in the distortion strength in order to see the effect of the for now. As I said before, white parts will not change in Fresnel, but especially we want to change outer shell for distortion. For this, we apply one minus to this one as well. Then to increase the intensity, we connect a power node and assign six as the power input. Okay, now the actual fun begins because we need to actually make that distortion effect because with the Fresnel that we created, we just made the mask, right? So we need a screen position node and then we're gonna get the UV of it and we're gonna remap that UVs as follows. That way we will stretch and mirror those UVs and this will allow us to have this refraction look. With that being said, we can multiply this Fresnel power with stretch effect to actually apply stretch on the outer shell. You see, for now will work kind of like a mask, but it's not done yet. We need to add this distorted value to actual UVs because right now we only have masked ones. Then finally, we can combine the core and outer shell by multiplying them, but we missed one thing. Because we play with the UVs, but not actually refracting the environment. For this, we need a scene color node and put it between the add and multiply node as follows. And this result will go to emission port of PBR master node. All right. Lastly, we need to change our PBR node from opaque to transparent to actually distort transparently. Warning you should keep your alpha value as one. Then we can switch to the scene and create a sphere, assign our shader to the material, and then assign this material to a sphere. Once you do that, you will have a gorgeous black hole. You can play with its values and tweak the values as it fits to you. Alrighty, that's all for this video. If you like this video, please press the like button over here. And if you like this one and you want to see more videos like that, you can check out the other videos that I have made. And if you like them too, you can consider to be a subscriber. So if you do that, I would be awesome. And your comments are pretty important for me. Um, please leave a comment in the comment box below. And I will be very awesome for that as well. And you can share this video on different platforms on Reddit. You're free to do that as well as in Discord channels or your friends. Um, that's all for this video. Hope you like it and see you in the next one.